up to this point, he's actually been playing Sloan quite a bit, and he's been playing like uh, the. If you, you can see it on the previous Armada video we have on our channel, he was playing a VSD with a Gladiator, three Gozantes, and a bunch of squadrons. But now, with the release of Wave 7, he's gone ahead and went with the Simon refit <clears throat> with Moth Churgerot. That's really interesting. Moth Churgerot, strategic advisor for the extra activation. Gunnery team, because it's a Simon, and the quad battery turret. So uh, you see right away, he's just going to slow roll. That's his huge artillery piece. He's going to hang it in the back. And uh, <clears throat> he does have Captain Jonas as well. So Captain Jonas is going to be the piece that uh, is going to hide in a rock, most likely, until he's ready to activate it, moves within distance one of his target ship, and then Simoons it, blows it out of the sky. And then combi co combining with that is the Gladiator 2, and he chooses the Gladiator 2 again because not only does it have an extra die for anti-squadron fire, but it also has red die out the sides, which allows him to use Jonas to get an accuracy. So Norm ended up being first player, which uh, I guess amongst his objective choices. Do you, do you know what the other two objectives were? That sure. Christian uh, had? Yeah. Was it? That was most wanted and fighter ambush. Fighter ambush. Oh, no, sorry. No. Uh, planetary Iron Cannon. Planetary Iron Cannon. <clears throat> and he went for Solar Chrome. Interesting. So what that means is that uh, Norm's going to have to deploy all his stuff first. And then Christian's going to get to choose the side of a board that's basically the sun. <laughs> and I don't think we have a graphic, a giant sun graphic, no? That would be silly if we did. But, uh, yeah, so he's going he's gonna to put all his just stuff down, just like superior positions. And Christian's going to choose a side, which is going to be the Corona. And then Christian will deploy his ships. And then any time uh, a ship makes an attack, if, if it's firing arc, regardless of distance, intersects with the side of the board that's the Corona, then uh, one, if he rolls an accuracy during his initial attack roll, he has to remove it right away before modifying dice. So I think what the reason maybe why Norm chose this objective over, say, something like Planetary Island Cannon is that Norm knows the Jonas trick well. And I think he realizes how integral to the, the list Jonas is. So he might be trying to engineer a situation where he can use Solar Krona against Christian with the Jonas ability. Now, the, the thing with that is, I think, that... Jonas is a dice mod that happens after the Solar Corona window of opportunity. So I think that in most cases what will happen... You're not actually going to put a... <laughs> All right, yeah. So I think Jonas actually gets to modify the accuracy after the window for Solar Corona procs. Um, with the choice to include... Jurjarod over Sloan. That frees that frees Christian up to run decimators, where they they wouldn't combo with Sloan's ability, but since he's playing Jurjarod, and again Jurjarod's very good with ISDs, just because you can perform some really incredible maneuvers with an ISD when you had Jurjarod. And with gladiators too, like gladiators at speed uh, speed three, what with a navigate command, you can basically have them do a ninety degree inside turn. Which, if you've never seen it before, it, it basically allows your, your gladiator to rotate 90 degrees without really moving. So it's a great way to keep uh, gladiators very close to a target if you're shooting at them, instead of overshooting them, while staying at speed 3, which might be important if you have, say, uh, Montferrat on it. Christian doesn't have Montferrat, he has Agent Callus, which is a pretty good tool against squadron heavy lists, especially Imperial squadron heavy lists because their, their uh, squadrons tend to be lower on the HP pool. And I, I gotta say, I know some people have uh, varying opinions over uh, squadron heavy fights, but especially when you see two players who are really good at flying squadrons play their squadrons, it's just it's a thing of beauty. I, I, I think it's beautiful. It's like, it's like 3D chess. Uh, expounding more on this Simon 1 refit, uh, a lot of the a lot of the lists I've been building with the Simon one have been Vader lists, 
as the, the Simon 1 doesn't have an ion cannon slot, which means that you can't fit dice modification upgrades like ion cannons. You can put veteran gunners in, but veteran gunners is very rigid in, in the terms of uh, can either turn a mediocre roll into an amazing roll, or it can turn your mediocre roll into a complete blank. So that's the reason why a lot I think a lot, I see a lot of the Simon one refit. Let's run Vader, and I'm I'm happy in a way because you know Vader is an iconic Star Wars character, and yet uh, nobody really plays no one really plays his uh, his commander card. Now it remains to be seen whether or not his his crew card, his boarding trooper esque card, will be will be played widely. Um, you know, one of the things I've also been working on is uh, is a quasar that has Darth Vader on it, and you just use or either a quasar or a raider, and you just dive dive towards a problem, a ship with a problem upgrade, like say for example a Gallon Haven or a Yavaris, and then when you activate within distance one, you just discard the title. But no Darth Vader is on the board right now. We just got Jerry versus Sloan. Two, uh, two of the best, I would say, commanders on the Imperial side. Christian just indicated that the Corona was, is going to be on the right side of the board. This is going to be a brutal one. It's a straight up joust almost. All right, here we go. Turn one. So we see Norm doing the same thing he did last game, uh, just blasting forward at speed three. Uh, I think trying to just get behind behind Christian's line as soon as possible, or uh, forcing Christian to turn towards his side of the board. And Christian, for his activation, uh, exhausts his strategic advisor. So the uh, turn goes back to Norm. Panzer Ninja said he showed up at the 2016 Canadian Nationals. I wonder though, was it on the winning side or the losing side? Could you please remind me, Panzer? Because I think you were there, weren't you? Rolling Thunder says. Oh, are you throwing shade at our, our viewers? <laughs> well, uh, Panzer Ninja is a local player. Yeah, I know. So. Um, Rolling Thunder says, it's curious if you'll start to be played more at the Simon. I definitely think so. I've already seen a lot of lists on the FFG forums and the Reddit uh, and, the, and the subreddit. Uh, just just a bunch of builds. Because he, he it's really the most obvious uh, commander combination with that Simon. And he turns into such a brutal murder machine with, with upgrades like H9s and quad battery turrets. You're like throwing seven to eight red dice at long range with accuracies. And so it allows you to snipe flotillas at long range or deal a lot of damage on the approach. So this is Norm activating his... <laughs> yeah, this is Norm activating his uh, Quasar with the Squall ability. Just pushing a couple of squadrons forward. Yeah, I had, I had, the only things I've seen of this wave really is the stuff that's been on stream. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't really seen Strategic Advisor yet. It's okay. St st yeah, Strategic Advisor has been... I think it's been one of the key key things that, that makes the, the large viable. It buys you an extra activation for four points. Now, the, the important distinction is that, at least the way we've ruled it today, is that if you've activated the ship with Strategic Advisor on it, but you haven't exhausted the advisor, yeah. you can't then use it uh, for the rest of the turn. Really? Yeah, because the card refers to you, yeah. and generally in X Wing and Armada, when a card refers, says the word "you," it refers to the ship. Yep. So it says when it's your turn to activate. Ah, right. Yeah. Have there been a lot of rulings about that so far? N not so much rulings as uh, 
people have been curious. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just curious. They're, they're, you could kind of extend that to say that if you're passing your turn, then yep. when it comes back to you, it's your turn again to activate. Where you would be forced to activate the big ship next. But I'm, I'm not saying that should be the ruling. I can just see that interpretation being possible based on that reading of the, the card. Christian is going to be able to activate his guys, his big hitters, his uh, Simon and his de demo after Christian's act. Oh, sorry, after Norm's activated his. Yeah. So he's going to have almost complete control of the approach. So it's Norm's job, really, or rather, it's Norm's squadron's job to carry a lot of the heavy load of uh, eliminating Christian's screen and then uh, going to work on the ISD or the demo. So demo activation on Christian's side, he reveals a squadron command, takes the token. Of course, the reason why he did that was because it, um, it allows him to keep Captain Jonas in his pocket until he's ready to use it to lock down uh, either the brace on the Quasar or the demo or the evade on the Architons. And we'll definitely see uh, see De Demo probably take more of an anti-squadron role, at least for the first couple of turns, with that two blue dice. So after all the ships have moved, we're going into the squadron phase now. Norm making very good use of those uh, rocks to hide the squadrons in, so that they don't get locked down by Christians. Checking to checking the range of the flak. He does hide in the rocks. Demo still gets to take a shot, but it's only going to be one blue instead of two. Well, he's got Callus as well, right? So, won't that be extra dice? On unique squadrons, yes. Of which he has quite a few. Yes, you're right. Yeah, it's pretty much all, except for the Interceptor. And that's that's the re that's the other reason why you want to run a demo, too, if you're putting at Agent Callus, because it allows you to shoot at uh, squadrons hiding in rocks and still yeah. get the benefit of Callus. This first activation is Merrick. Being very careful to stay on the medium range. Dengar also creeping up. Norm's going to have to be very careful about not jumping into... Jumping too far ahead. Not only because of the demo, because there is a very brutal kill box uh, between the Simon and the demo. As they both are shooting... While the Simon shoots two black flak, and Demo shoots two and potentially three blue flak. Jonas decides, uh, since Norm is not using the real estate on the rock, he's going to go ahead and do it. Which is a good uh, bait as well. He's kind of goading Norm to uh, go and take out Jonas and then punish him with the Demolisher activation. Valenruder hugging close to the demo. Now this seems almost too good to be true, but I I almost would <clears throat> I'd take the bait just to take out Jonas. Jonas is such an important piece of Christian's battle strategy that you may be willing to risk trading an ace and some damage on your other aces for that. Christian warning Norm to stay away from Callus. There'll be a lot of squadron chess here for a little while. Yeah, this this initial this initial squadron uh, movement is very important because there's a bunch of auras you got to keep in mind as well. Uh, in addition to the squall uh, the squall ability. Uh, nothing's better than fake judge calls when you're trying to get Tom Terry. Yeah, Christian, Christian's playing this smart. There is, there's no need to jump your squadrons out ahead, with the exception of the bait, the bait Jonas. 
your, your ship's firepower is superior to your opponent, so if he wants to deal with your squadrons, he's going to have to come under the flak umbrellas, but in the meantime, you just keep them close and you just creep forward. Because I, I do believe that Quasar is in long range of the Simon. Uh, it may, may be. I, I think he may have just been out. Okay. Saber pushes up just a little bit. Now, PT106 mentioned that he thinks it'll cost three or four squads to kill Jonas by Alpha. I agree. However, what he, he might do is, yeah, and this is a smart move. He During the squadron phase, he moves Saber up. Then uh, he ensures that it's within distance one to two of Jendin, which allows him to get a snipe off. Yeah. So he rolled. He rolled accuracy in at one hit. So he braced. Uh, he burned the brace. So more than one hit. No, he he rolled an accuracy to burn the brace via slow. Oh, right here. Yeah, and but it was just one hit. Uh, because there's nothing to follow it up with, it's not... He's going to get the brace back next turn. So Jonas is now at 4 HP. What Norm can do is he can he can activate his Quasar. Yeah. And he can... Double um, snipe. Double snipe. And what he needs to hit, roll is three hits with both attacks. And even with the brace, that's two damage, two damage. That's enough to kill Jonas. Well, I mean, yeah, at that point, if you can put a lot of damage on Jonas without having to sacrifice very much, yeah, then you can jump up one ship to maybe finish it off. True. Or one, one squadron, sorry. So, kill, you know, trading a squadron for Jonas, I think, is something he's more than willing to do. Well, what we might see here is now Hal Runner uh, moving to distance one of the of the saber, <laughs> so that when it does get its attack next turn, it's going to get five dice. No, sorry. It's going to, it's going to get four dice. So I guess he was within range one already, because oh, he did roll four dice. Do you know which squadron that was? Oh, okay. Uh, no, I'm not sure which squadron that is, but uh, he'll be able to attack... Oh, no, sorry, I won't be able to do that first. Well, though, theoretically, if that's the finishing blow, you can even get back out of range. Well, he can he can get back out of range guess, anyway because so, he's they're in a rock; they're not engaged. Yeah, they're not engaged. Straight in mind. So this is actually a, a a free attack for him next round. Yes, he can attack and then fade away, which is which is probably what we're going to see here. I think I heard Norm pop the Hondo right now. Oh, really? Yeah, I heard he he said he was going to take a nav and something else. So there's a benefit that maybe not everyone knows all the cards. So what does Hondo do? Hondo is a, it's an officer, uh, it's a neutral officer, so either rebels or imperials can take him. And uh, what Hondo says at the start of the ship phase, you can discard the cart to choose two of your different, uh, yeah, two different command tokens. command tokens and place them on two different ships. And then your opponent takes the two command tokens that you didn't choose of the four possible ones and puts them on two different ships of theirs. And this basically gives you the tokens before any ship actually makes its move. So the demo took a concentrate fire. And I think uh, something took a nav. It might have been the it might have been the Quasar. So squadron command on the Simon and engineering command on the on Christian's demolisher. So five five squadron activations coming in with the Squadron Command with a token on the Quasar. Okay, just making sure he uses the Squall before he does any activations on the yep. squadron. So he might, he might use it to move the... There's two squadrons on the right side of the screen. He might be using those to move in, or he might use them to readjust the positioning of some of the squadrons on, on the left side. So this is a this is a really cool maneuver. What I think he's aiming to do here is going to do what uh, Travis was talking about earlier, which is the strike and fade away. Because Jonas is in the rock, he's not engaged with uh, any of his squadrons. So that's going to allow Norm to do this: move up, attack, and then fade away. Yeah, the speed zero on Quasar. I'm thinking that's probably what it is. Yeah, I mean, provided that he is indeed out of long range of Simon. Otherwise, I don't think you want to give up your defense tokens. Yeah, it, it, you're right. It, it all hinges on whether... Uh, 
So this is Soon Tier Fell attacking Jonas. So those, I think that was three accuracies and a crit. So no actual damage, but he still uh, he still burns burns a brace, exhaustingly, and then he runs back, back to them. So four four HP left. He just needs to deal three damage twice, so that even with braces, it can no, he only has to deal. So one he burned a brace. Oh, okay, because there's two braces tokens. So this is yeah, Saber Squadron sniping. So he rolled, uh, yeah, he rolled one damage and he burned the second brace. Or sorry, he threw away the brace that was exhausted with Sintu Fell. So now there's one brace left, which means that uh, he just needs to roll a three damage and an accuracy, and that kills Jonas. Okay, so third activation looks like Jenden. And Jenden's going to double tap. Looks like an accuracy. Yep. That burns the uh, yeah. brace. So, yep. so it looks like he was able to block the brace. And now he's got to check action. He's, he's just looking. Yeah. So uh, uh, some table talk on the on the mic there. He actually what he did was he his second activation was the Jendin attack with Saber. Yeah. Then move Jendin. Then now he's attacking with Saber second, and that way he can move away. But I think it's one damage left to go. Yeah, so two more activations left. I believe Jenden's sitting at two HP with a, with a single exhausted brace token. Well, no, because I think he had an accuracy there, so I think two, da two damage went through. But I'm wrong. Right, okay. So he had an accuracy, burn a die, and two damage. Now, n notice what uh, Norm is doing here. He's making sure that all his fighters stay within the blue die flak umbrella of the Architants. Yeah. So that's enough to take out Jonas. Very well played by Norm. That does put something in the arc for... But it doesn't really matter because uh, Demolisher can move and then fire. Also, you notice what he did. The one, uh, the one squadron that he moved in within the flak range of the demo was the generic tie in or something, so he doesn't get the callus die. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. He, he'll still get one blue die, but he won't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not that scared of a single blue die. This last activation, is that Merrick Steel hiding in the no, rock? No, it's Derek. Uh, Dengar. Dengar, right. So we may just want to bring Dengar over to. For sure. Give us some counter. Ooh, actually, he might. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, his, so his last activation is going to be Muller run away. Yeah. Right, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Getting a double arc of. I mean, I guess it's only one more die. But. 34th Gingerbread says, It's cool seeing all these bills. I'm not really a fan of Captain Jonas. Um, feel free to tell us why that you're not a fan, but speaking from personal experience, Captain Jonas is, is brutal with a Demo 2 or an ISD or a Decaps VSD with, uh, say, something like or it's a way to ensure that you know you lock down accuracies on flotilla so that your demo two can kill it. Okay, it looks like Christian did activate something. No, he uh, he just uses strategic advice. Oh right, strategic. So okay, my bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you, can you can you tell me uh, how much time you spent doing that? Like two minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, this uh, this stream is not sponsored by Corona it's, Extra. No. No. You're lucky I didn't get a bunch of different suns. Oh, yeah. 
34 Gingerbread says uh, he'd rather run a Glad 1 for Solar Flank and Tank. I, I agree that the Glad 1 is better for raw damage output, and you see that Norm has actually chosen to go with... Uh, Ch chosen to go with the Glad One himself, but I've I've always I've just found that Jonas uh, has great utility. Like, if your opponent is running a lot of flotillas, and it's it's just very trivial to to bank a squadron command on bank bank a squadron token on your demo, and just have Jonas kind of follow your demo because he has grit. It's harder to lock him down as well, and you can set up situations where you can just pop your opponent's flotillas with uh, Jonas plus Demolisher. Norm's, Norm's demo has engine techs, so that's why he's uh, playing with a fourth tick on his ruler. Just what, he's, what he wants to do is he wants to get close to the... He wants to get close to the flotilla while at the same time staying out of the front arc of this side. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. It, he might even have dodged the, the side arc of the. Okay, he's gonna. Yeah. Stop here. Reevaluate. And decide. Yeah. Oh, and I was gonna take a shot first. Yeah. Of course. He takes his demo shot at the front of the Gazanti, uh, and he does have to take the shot before yeah, engine teching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> no. No scat. Sorry. No accuracy there, so you couldn't scatter. So actually, there's an example of if Jonas was was there, then he could have actually uh, made something of that role. So here's the engine tech, and that that might this result in an arc. I think he's trying. He's debating between being an arc and being useful, right? In later rounds. Now I'm gonna trust that. When when Norm was taking his shots, he they they knew that uh, the front arc was not within the Solar Corona's influence. <laughs> he was going out of the side arc, so definitely was not. Was Christian just checking to see if uh, his Gazanti double arcs the demo. Christian has a squadron command on his number four. Number. Well, don't forget, he's saying number yeah. four. It's not necessarily one. You're right. <laughs> Although, if we find out his number before Gazanti yeah. is the one on the right, we're, we'll switch the numbers around, so it's easy for us. It's one of the trickier parts when you're doing commentary is we have our numbers, their ship numbers could be anything. It could be 17. <coughs> Norm just forgot to, to uh, recover full shields at the start of the game, so just doing some adjusting there. So squadron command, and the, the demo actually presents itself as a, as it a does, yeah. target. Christian decides not to use the squadron dial; he just uh, takes a shot. Side to front, yeah, for our accuracy. Christian using the the nav token on that ship to slow down from speed two to speed one, and just gonna crawl along, just inch forward. I don't know what I was saying. The gladiator's definitely not on the arc of the side moon. Mm -hmm. So now Norm's last ship is going to be the uh, Architans, and Norm Norm says that his uh, he does a nav command. With his Architans, he spends a dial. And doing again what we saw in the previous game, which is doing a wide loop, uh, using those engine techs, and I'm actually impressed by... by uh, <laughs> it's given me a new respect for engine techs and Architans, as a matter yeah. of fact. Now this is interesting. I think he wants to try to do this move so he can shoot both out the, the left and right side arcs. Left when for the uh, Gazanti, and then right for when the <clears throat> when the demolisher moves next turn or this turn rather. But I think he also also wants to make sure he turns enough that he can continue the pursuit. Yes. If he's still aiming towards the north end of the map, 
it, he's going to be on a trajectory. It's going to be tough to come around. Right. Looks like a double arc from the Gazanti number three onto the uh, the Arkitans. Yeah. PT106 talks about ET Arkitans being good flagships. I'm uh, I'm stunned that I didn't really think about it until now. Most of my lists have included demolishers, and generally I put my commanders on the demolisher because it's a it's a very slippery ship, and it's because I've never played engine techs on an Arkitans that I've never really seen the the power that I'm. <laughs> it's I, I guess it's a lot like. I guess it's a lot like the CR90 TRC Corvettes that some rebel lists use to put their commanders on. Except uh, a slightly more expensive, but a little bit more durable. And it has the... It, it, can, have a, it, ha, it can have a side arc that can potentially be a little bit more scary. So demo activation here by Christian. Front to front. It's a long range attack. And nothing. Nope. Whoa. Yeech. So one of the one of the things some of our local players have been brainstorming about is an Architans with Thrawn. And Thrawn with Navigate and Concentrate Fire. Like if you spawn spam a bunch of Architans with Thrawn. Uh, Depending on the situation, you can either have a navigate or a concentrate fire dial revealed, and that not only does it allow you to maintain your maneuverability turn after turn, but it allows you also to keep up the fire. So, you know, perhaps a Simon backed with a couple of Architans with intensify firepower, uh, and Thrawn is your admiral. It's going to speed three, it's trying to set up a broadside shot. PT-106, I like the way you think. Can you speak to Right. I <laughs> just Christian have a little trouble with this. <laughs> <coughs> Sometimes, sometimes I notice the uh, there's like a plastic t slot. Um, it's not glued properly on a lot of yeah. demolishers, so it just falls off. <clears throat> so, so it doesn't get. So he is actually within close range of the of the quasar, but Jonas is dead, so he's only he's not gonna be able to rely on that. <laughs> But but he rolls a double hit on it. So oh, it's like five? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a pretty good roll. The gold die has a double oh, hit. Oh, is that it? I thought the gold die was blank. So seven brace to four, but uh, APT's triggers. And we'll find out shortly what the uh, crit is. Looks like one damage. And then uh, crit. It's another coolant discharge. So it's the exact same. Uh, now, now the thing is, a coolant discharge on a quasar is not really that big of a no, deal. He doesn't care. Yeah. It's not like the coolant discharge that he got. Last on your time. yeah, on your Akbar assault frigate, that's a big deal. He's <laughs> trying to determine, I think, if it's obstructed by that demo. Now I'm not sure what the speed is of the quasar because that's going to determine whether or not the quad battery turrets. I think it was only speed uh, two. To play. But then the I think the Simon's going at speed one. All right, so he's using the squadron token uh, from the Simon that he got off the, the Hondo usage. So activating Merrick. So Merrick's shooting at the front. Uh, puts one down. Hit crit. No, hit. Right. So he's an unexpected shot. 
So they're he's both they're both going speed two, so quad battery turrets doesn't proc. Five red dice. And doesn't look like a very good roll. Looks like it was a bunch of accuracy in one crit. So I think that card is called Tr Thruster Fisher. Uh, no. uh, Thruster Fisher is a crit where if he changes his speed, he suffers one damage. Now that here's a side arc shot from the Simon to the demo. And the Simon is going slower than the demo, so he does get an extra blue die. And he's using yeah, his concentrate fire. And he uses concentrate, yep. So no brace, no redirect for for Norm because of the two accuracies. Norm will use his evade to reroll. And it looks like he rolled an accuracy, so he's just going to take two damage. Well, sorry, he was going to take two damage, but uh, I forgot that Brunson was actually on the demo. And Brunson is the officer that when it's within, I believe, one to two of an obstacle, yeah. you can exhaust it to just cancel one, straight up cancel one attack time. Interesting. Yeah. So Norm, Norm kind of got away. And that, that's one of the things we were talking earlier about how uh, a lot of Simon builds include Vader, and it's for precisely this reason that front arc attack did almost no damage. And that was because he, he whiffed and there was no dice modification. So if he had Vader, he could have spent a defense token. Over. She's using Jojo on here to get an extra yep. point of go. I don't think there's any escape for the Quasar. No, he just gets. But he gets an activation. He does get an activation. He can. He can hope for uh, another whiff by Jerjerod. Out of close range for the demo. So number three with the squadron command. Warn a key. Activating. <laughs> Continues to put some pressure on the Arctans. some damage cards onto the Architents. Now, this is interesting because I think uh, right now the Simon is, or, or rather the Architents is within the front arc of the Simon. Seems like it. Uh, yeah, probably. And there's no shields left on the front. Now, <laughs> that... The Arkans is going at speed three, and because the Arkansas has Montferrat on it, the Guzanti cannot shoot at it because it only has one blue die. That's true. Guzanti overlaps Mornaki. Norm decides to keep it in front, probably because he's going to jump it next turn. Well, so but the Arkansas is firing right into the Solar Corona next turn. The, the solar cone only matters if you yeah, actually roll an accuracy result. Is that Mahler Mithil? I think. No. Yes, it. Uh, no. It's Merrick Steel, I think. Dengar coming in as well. 
And I think that Merrick is there just to block the the other decimator from coming in and dealing more damage to the yeah coming in and dealing more damage to the Architons. The other thing is when you when you align your when you align your squadrons like that, what you're trying to do is you're also trying to create a line up of squadrons such that squadrons that are further back that aren't fast aren't able to jump in front of a ship. And I think that's that was also the. Decimator, three black dice against Merrick Steel. One damage. I think Burm's okay with that. I believe this is Vale and Rudor. I think that is. That's smaller, perhaps? It's hard to tell from this. I think it's either it's either Mahler or Alrunner. Alright, that was that was turn two, I believe. Twice. Turn three. There's a lot of interesting decisions. Both players have uh, have done a really good job of forking their opponent. Quasar first. So I, I think I I think I heard him say nav. So it's not he's not doing a he's not doing a squadron command. He's doing a nav command. But he he still gets to activate squall. Yeah. So Squall moving Dengar. Another move here. I think that's I think that's Jendin. Right. Okay. Uh, it My bad. seemed like um, instructor was uh, not heavy. Right. It's the uh, Goren instructor Goren is not heavy. Now the the aim here, I guess, is. You're not going to get out of the Simon's front arc, but you're going to want to at least try to obstruct the shot. Okay, so it is a two turn. Um, the just out of close range. And that so he didn't change speed, so he doesn't have to worry about the, the thruster fissure. He, he did. I think he did use the nav command to get an extra tick. <laughs> it remains to be seen whether or not he's actually in medium range of the Simon. But the upside is that that was probably the hardest decision Norm had to make this round. <laughs> Wait, why is that the upside? Well, I mean, now he doesn't have to agonize over whether or not he touches his heart. He can, he can spend his uh, mental energy trying to figure out how to win the squadron war. Yeah. Because I think that's where that's where Norm's going to win this game. Quasar's going to go down, like someone mentioned earlier, to sacrificial lamb. But that lamb has to buy something. And right now, the only thing he's killed is Jonas. Don't get me wrong, the Jonas has actually been important. It's been important that he actually killed it. Sure. But I mean, you don't forget, Arcanus has taken a lot of fire already. So Christian activates his demo. Navigate command. Probably going to see probably some, uh, probably see some callous flak first. Spider guys are here for recovery shield. Feels like Christian's gotten more out of that Hondo activation than Norm did. Yeah. Two damage on Howard and it gets scattered. 
And now he's shooting at the regular tie interceptor. Yeah. One blue gets nothing. Well played, Norm. Yeah. No, ordinance extra reroll. One damage, accuracy to scatter. Take Dengar takes one. We're gonna see some more of that Jerry magic in play. <laughs> the the problem though, although I guess if he if he turns that way, then it becomes okay. Then it becomes a question of whether his front arc is can actually catch the quasar. It's close. Yeah, I think he got it. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now they have to, to check the arc. Yeah, no, it's pretty and clear. Yeah, he got it. The front arc. Jared Gerard to the rescue again. Made wow. Hornet's expert roll. Two hits. So, it's not enough. Braces down to one. Or, sorry, zero. Looks like zero. It's a demo activation. Yeah. Oh, and then you concentrate fire token. Yeah, to reroll the red. Is that accuracy? Yeah. Ordinance experts. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's a lot of damage that they didn't take. Well, now I wonder what he does. I wonder if he just stays on the on the rear of the IST and just starts starts eating it from behind. And that might be what he does here. Weird, did he just ramp? Oh no, now he wants to check to see uh what he needs to know if he's gonna Yeah, if he's gonna overlap if he does that maneuver. That's close. He's gonna overlap. Eh, well the 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 ruler is crooked. Yeah, no, but it, it's just gonna That actually doesn't look like an overlap. Oh no, it's right, it overlap it doesn't overlap the marker, it doesn't overlap yeah. the ship. Because it's the inner corner of the yes. So he's gonna take a side arc shot here now. It's five damage. So brace and redirect token spin on Christian's side and the APT. So the crit he got was the one that you can't suspend, uh, you can't expend uh, def exhausted defense tokens. I think that's Crew Panic. I can't remember the the name of the card. Nope, not Crew Panic. It's a compartment fire. Number four, Squadron Command. Two, two activations, starting with his Merrick Steel. And Merrick Steel does have grit, so he actually doesn't have to stick around there. So he's gonna, yeah. I don't want the counter So he's gonna move uh, Merrick Steel to be out of the way. Outside of outside of distance one of Norm's Merrick Steel, he's free to attack the Sloan Architons. Gets two hits, and it, I think he uh, Norm redirects to the the rear of the Architons. Yeah. 
No. <laughs> Since he's going to activate Jonas, but he probably means Jenden. And he's probably going to use it here to double tap the, uh, the Merrick Steel Ship. So one crit, one hit, uh, gets a contain off, so no face-up damage. So what is Norm thinking through here? He just has the one, he, he just has the one ship left. Yeah. His, his options are shoot the uh, Psy Moon, shoot the Gazanti, and shoot the squadrons in front of him. Yes. Uh, I'd be curious to know if he actually dialed in a squadron command. Because as it is, like none of his none of his squadrons are actually going to be doing anything this no, turn. Well, he doesn't activate them. A bunch of them will be able to do something. Yeah. So it was a, it was a squadron command that he did. Here's Sinterfell. Yes, Sinterfell shooting Mordecai. One, two, two. Yeah. <laughs> Three damage on Sinterfell. Three damage on Morna. Sorry, yes. Yep. So uh, Christian burns Morna Key's, uh, Morna Key's brace, throws it away to reroll. And the reason why he did that was because Morna Key's abilities, when she activates, she can recover a discarded uh, defense token. Which makes sense because Mordecai hasn't activated yet. Not to say that it's only about the You might. Mallard's coming in. Is it all three ships? Going after Morna again. Now that the defense token's down. Swarm reroll. Three hits. Down to one HP. So now this this actually <clears throat> makes a pretty good case about uh, Yeah. This makes a pretty good case for Norm firing his anti squadron guy yes. at the front now. Yep, and that's what he's going to do. Morna first. Dead. Dead. Nice. Valen Ruyor. Nothing. One hit on the Decimator. So that was the best thing he could hope for there. And now... So actually he's going to shoot at the Gazant. Interesting. Oh. Accuracy. Dual turbo, wow, well, oh. double hit takes two damage. Very nice. All right. So now, uh, traveling at speed three, I can't, I don't think it has a nav token, so it can't do the engine tech trick. It just needs to make sure it dodges the front arc. That's gonna be easy. Yeah, but you also don't wanna put yourself too close to the, uh, the side moon as well. The side moon side arc has three blue, one yeah. oh, yeah. one red. But because he doesn't have a nav command, he really can't move further away from the ship. And speed three is uh, speed three on the Architons with with Montferrat means that the means that the uh, Gazanti can't do any damage. And 
the and the Psy Moon at the side arc can only shoot three. Number three Gazanti activated. Squadron Command. Go with the dip. Go with the decimator first. PT106 says the squad command on the Architon is going to bite him out. Four blue from Simon. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be four blue because it's it's the quad battery turrets. But then because uh, what's his name? Uh, Montferrat is on the Architons. He gets to he gets it, the attacks can be obstructed. So he can either do a four blue, zero red attack, or a three blue, one red attack. Now, one of the downsides of playing Mordeki is just that <laughs> she costs more than a Gazanti. Yeah. So it really hurts when she goes down. It's the only game I played all day where I didn't lose it. Every other game I lost all of them. Oh, I'll never have my own guy. I don't want to run Pretty good. Uh, What's that? Pretty good uh, rolls here. Yep. Black dice are consistent. Decimator gets run over. Now the Simu. So let's see what kind of havoc it can wreak. Concentrate fire. Ouch. Starting with a side to the front of the Argentines. Struck at close range, no evade token for Norm. This is going to be a lot of damage to Zorim. Moves the red die, goes for blue to start with. And looks like an accuracy, enough to kill it. There goes Sloan. Sloan's down. Now with Sloan going down, uh, Norm's anti-ship power on his squadrons has been significantly reduced. Uh, and now yeah, he's che he's checking line of sight from the front to the rear, and yeah, Norm's saying that you do have you do have it, so he's going to shoot to the rear. No shields on the rear of that that quasar speed three. He's going to speed two. Well, speed three and the quasar speed two on the IST, which allows him to do the quad battery turrets. They're both going to speed two. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh wow. I, again, right? That's the reason why m many players who play Simon end up playing. Oh man, another blank. Jeez. Oh, that hurts. That, wow. <laughs> that ship is <laughs> is running on borrowed time. I did not really think that ship would still be here. Nope. Yeah. wonder if he's looking to ram here. <laughs> When you when you have a ship, when you have a list where the one of the ships like the biggest point investment ship wise is a ship that throws a bunch of dice, you want to make sure that that shot counts. Otherwise, you've like basically thrown away 150 points worth of ship sure. that's that's doing nothing. Which is why like uh, luck mitigation is so important on big ships. It's important on every ship, but. When, when the ship represents a bigger percentage of your entire offensive power, you need to make sure that ship is hitting turn after turn. All right, so Kristen's activated all the ships and all of the squadrons, so a few squadron activations here for Norn. Yep, starting with Merrick Steel. <laughs> Three damage on the Decimator. And Decimator, yeah. Oh. I guess that wasn't a decimator. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> not bothering. He's just saying he's got three more damage on him. He's got one left. Farvnor says, uh, what you're saying is leading shots, Darth and Vance Gunners for large ships just makes sense. Uh, yeah. I, whenever I take an ISD or a Liberty or a MC-80, uh, I just, it just makes sense to, to spend that extra four points to put a leading shots in. Especially if, if anyone's played the, the fish farm build that's become popular. With the single MC80 plus a bunch of bunch of flotillas, your your other ships literally do zero offensive power. Like they don't have any dice that you throw to attack. So it makes sense that you absolutely must make sure that the one attack that you have every turn is actually doing something to advance your game state. And th there are lists like Christians where you have a demo too, and that's fine. And he is running luck mitigation on his, his small ship, but. You really do need to have a way to ensure that your damage is consistent turn after turn. Here's a snipe attack with a saber squadron against the decimator and one damage. No, I think it's against Merrick. Oh, Merrick still. My, my mistake. Uh, that looks like Dengar jumping in the middle, and at that the point of that I believe is to free up Ma, free up Mahler Mithil. Yes, but that's less And uh, I think that was the interceptor squadron that's going there to lock down the Jendin and Merrick Steel, and followed closely by Hal Runner. Updating the that's better now that it's not dead. Down in one health. I'd be very surprised if uh, Norm didn't dial in a squadron command this turn, because all he needs to do is move. Uh, <laughs> all he needs to do is move Mauler Mithil just like a centimeter, and that'll kill the decimator. He does. He so he did dial in a squadron command. I mean, I'm surprised he dialed in a command at all. I, you might have just thought he was not going to be here for this round. You might, he might have just, uh, he might secretly wish that he had the Arpitons instead. <laughs> and Norm say, asking, how greedy can I get exactly with this smaller mythical splashdown? And the answer is very greedy. Yeah. PT106 says, using Simon here is a valid choice even without re-rolls. I mean, as we've seen, it's been two straight turns that he hasn't actually been able to do anything significant with the front arc of his Simon. And it might be result-oriented thinking to say, well, look at the results of this one game. But I think over... like, Think about if you take this, this Simon to a tournament. And you roll fine three out of four games. But on the fourth game... You just completely blank. And it's true that it can happen if, even if you have luck mitigation, but uh, the, the longer, like, if you're, if you're going on a game-by-game -game basis where you're just playing a one casual game, one casual game, one casual game, the, the effect of uh, the lack of luck mitigation may not be as apparent as if you're playing multiple games in the same day, where the likelihood of just bricking on a big red dice attack with no luck mitigation is a lot bigger. Sintir is going to shoot at Valen here. Six damage. Yeah. Yeah, Deng Dengar is uh, Dengar is a range one, so it allows Sintir to attack and flee. The decimator. Oh yeah, the decimator did jump. Yeah, sorry, you're right. Yes. I forgot I can do something about that. <laughs> C 
This is a failure. This this was on the this was on the Gazanti, right? Yeah, that was the yeah. second attack on the Gazanti. Did he roll another accuracy? They look like accuracies. Yeah. And he's trying to check to see if he can use his evade. Okay. What's the damage so, Yeah, crit. I think that's crit hit. Uh, yeah, crit hit accuracy. It's enough to take out that. Wow, the <laughs> this Quasar is like the hero of the story here. Oh, that's hilarious. Little momentary panic, but still I throw it a bit. I, yeah, he's just going off the top of the map. Is he still in the front arc? Yeah. Yeah, it does look, it does look, I mean, on video it looks like it should be in the solar corona, but that's weird. Although I guess he moved now, right? But yeah, it was like moved, right yeah. here, so yeah. it was like this, yeah. I mean, it's always worth checking. Yep. Thing is, I, I play solar corona so rarely that I would just, I would also be forgetting so I think uh, we did confirm that the miracle did not happen on table two. So this will this, the mismatch will decide the winner of the regionals. Now, just to give a little bit of context, uh, in order for Christian to take the title here, he needs to win. He's, he's losing. He, so he's Christian has twenty six points and Norm has uh, twenty eight. So he needs to, I believe, 7-4? Seven 7-4. Four? Seven four. Well, 7-4, yeah. I, they used to have, yeah. used to have the head-to-head -head yeah. be the first tiebreaker before it's ranked of schedule. Right. I don't think that's officially the, how it's decided anymore. Although, if you have two equal players, it's always better to do head to head before you go to strength of schedule and regarding the victory and stuff like that. The thing is, from the looks of this, uh, if 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 Christian takes out the Quasar, yeah. Christian takes out the Quasar. He might even he might comfortably get a seven four. Oh, sorry, seven four, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was a shot on Suntir Fell, which got scattered. And nothing on the counter attack. Alright. Crit is damage munitions. Which is uh, damage munitions is a crit where that says um, when you're attacking another ship, before you uh, attack, remove one die from your pool. Yeah. That's in addition to being obstructed and whatnot. So let's see if he can finish off the finish off the Quasar with this uh, demo attack. I don't know if he's inert. It's close. He might, he might, he might have to measure it. Oh, okay. His long range before was a size. So. Yeah. That's it. Down goes Quasar. Oh, squadron command on the demo. Demo. I don't think he has much hope of taking out. I don't think he has much hope of taking out the uh, ISD. So uh, the the path to victory for Norm here is just to 
take out as many squadrons as possible without while losing as few of his and perhaps trying to take out the the Gazanti with his with his demo. It's a snipe attack. On, I think he said Jendon. Oh, no, that wasn't Jendon. That was really? Valen, yeah. And so double accuracy is ensure they couldn't do anything. So Valen goes down. Norm closing the point gap here. Very important for him. Now, I believe that... Uh, a 6-5 loss for Norm is a 60-point threshold. Yeah, so that's all Norm needs to do. Norm needs to stay within 60 points. But, no, but that, that would... If Norm's ahead by two points now, that would tie them on points. But Norm is behind. No, I know. So, like, if it's a 6-5 for, for Christian... Yeah, oh, sorry, no, that would put Christian at 27. And that would put Norm at... You're right. Or, sorry, not 27, but it would put him at... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Farbnor Christian uh, is the 2016 Canadian Nationals champion for Armada. He spends a lot of his time playing X-Wing, so I feel like Armada's a bit of a side project for him. But aside from his uh, Canadian Nationals win, he placed very highly during the 2016 Worlds. I, I don't know what his placement was in the 2017 Worlds. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so I, I believe top 16 finishes at Worlds and uh, Canadian Nationals champion in 2016 for, for Christian as well. So th this is a game between two national champions. Although Norm tells me since he's moved away from Toronto, it's become a lot harder for him to, to practice Armada. Wow, interesting. Uh, uh, three eight. Norm's bid was three eighty eight. Twelve points. Just ask, answering uh, someone. And yes, I guess it's a twelve point bid. Never mind. Did is this Simon activated already? <laughs> no. No. I wonder what he's doing. Is he just risking the the uh, front arc? Oh, you know what? Oh, you know he might be risking the the Simon front arc to take a shot at demo. So he's gonna e tech straight. So overlap. So he he in fact does overlap the debris, takes the sh the two shields on the rear, but he's doing this all to. Yeah, he's doing this all to set up an attack. And actually, this is... <laughs> oh, and he doesn't have the front no, arc. I don't think Norm would have made this move. Wow. 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 Does he really think he can take that gladiator? And Dengar with a jet in activation. Scattered. Nice. Side arc. And, and Norm. Norm grazed the asteroid, but. That keeps him within uh, the uh, the effect uh, of Brunson, which allows him to get rid of a dive straight up. And that's in addition to the obstruction that Christian is going to have to take from the shot. Yep. So, yeah, he doesn't have front arc. Quad battery turrets, yeah, side to rear. Oh, he is side to rear, then he doesn't have. Oh, quad battery this time. Yep. It's five dice. Close range. Oh my god. So, I, I just want to point out, I know there's been somebody in the chat who's been talking all about right, it. Right. It's three. You don't need to say anything. Yeah, like what, what else can I tell you, man? It's, 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 
<laughs> I mean, that's why that's why Norm did this. He knew he was safe. Yeah. Well, no, that 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 could have that could have ended up worse for him. Uh oh. It's a ram. <laughs> Maybe. He's going at speed two. I guess, he, did he have a navigate command? Oh, maybe. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Swarm reroll. Two hits. Take one. Uh, Keith Crummel, he did shoot before Engine Tex. He, uh, I think, I think, didn't he take a sh shot against the? Uh, he took a shot against the Kazanti. Uh, I thought. I might have taken it before he moves at all. No, oh, I wonder why. Oh, you you know why I think. Uh, Maybe Norm wasn't confident that he could get another arc in yeah. in the arc of the whatever. So I wonder if uh, I wonder if Norm actually recognizes that he just needs to make sure that he ju he, he just needs to make sure that Demo doesn't die. I mean, if Demo dies, he gets tabled, and then the the point. Uh, well, yeah, he may not. He may calculus not. changes completely, like because he gets four hundred. Um, yeah. So I think they're just checking. Okay, he's got both front and side to the side. Squadron command. It looks like, yeah, Merrick Steel. And he, this is why I call Mer Merrick Steel the endgame piece. Now that all the opposing squadrons are gone, it's all Merrick. Sidek will be obstructed, I believe. Side arc will be instructed when the demo takes a shot, right? Yeah. I mean, unless he goes past. Yeah. Merrick turns to two crits. Nice. So I suspect. Yeah, Jen is going to make Merrick double tap. Turn into a crit. There you go. Are you going to burn your redirect? He doesn't have, I don't know if he has anywhere to put it. Because he took a lot of Jerry damage, so I don't know if he has shields yeah. left on the other side. Oh, no, he's got one left there, so. Yeah. So with the brace, he only takes one damage, and I think that might be the last shield on that side. So his first shot's gonna be front to side. Yeah, and what he's probably gonna do is just turn around and do the front side to side. Ordnance experts. He needs that APT crit. Doesn't get it. Oh, he does get the APT crit. Nice. So two and a crit. That's three damage going straight to the hall, I think. Wow. Damage munitions. It's the same one that the uh, Quasar had. So he has to remove a die when he gets shot. They did have one shield left in there. Right, yeah. So, yeah, side to side, obstructed. Ordnance expert, he needs, he's fishing here for a, and he gets the crits. That's one, two, three, four. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> Gladiator down. Wow. Man, th things were looking really bleak for, uh, things were looking really bleak for uh, Norm. As, but as long as he, yeah, uh, as, as long as Norm does not lose his demo, he's got this in the bag. And now look what he's trying to do. Remember, he has Brunson on his demo. So he wants to stay within distance one or two of, a, of an asteroid to get that extra cancel. Yeah. That's why it's
Rolling Thunder says sooner or later Simon has to start hitting. Uh, yeah, but the damage has been done. I mean, we just witnessed three. Yeah, he checked for Brunson. Now he. Now the thing is, he didn't because he didn't nav. He wasn't able to get that engine tech off. Yeah, and so here's the ISD. Uh, concentrate fire commands going all out here. And <laughs> see if it's in medium range. I don't think it is. Rear to front. It is medium range. Jeez. Okay. Here, here are the come <laughs> the full seven, eight dice, nine dice potentially with the concentrate fire here. Ah, there we go. Finally. I don't see an accuracy, which is why he's going for a blue on the concentrate fire. Then he no brace. Yeah, craps a brace. Now he does have Brunson. So, yeah. Is that enough to kill him? Six damage. Moving seven to the side. Exactly, and then nothing plus. <laughs> and that was your ISD versus one thing. Two hits and a crit. Yeah, right. The last uh, yaw is reduced by one. Okay. That's what the thrust fisher. Thrust control, man. Thrust function, control, yeah. maximum function. So, and finally, a good roll by the Simon, but okay. Brunson, <laughs> Brunson saves the day. So speed one, which means that he can't even ram. And now all, uh, yeah, all Norm needs to do is make sure he dialed in a navigate command so he can just get the hell out of there. Again, see, it, it hinges on whether or not he can get that navi he got that navigate command dialed in. Well, I'm, I'm sure that he does. Yeah, because there's one more turn after this. He had the choice to come in or go out and kind of right. eke out the point victory. So, I'd be very surprised if he didn't. Yeah. And I think we'll see uh, Jendon probably die here. We've got some spare squadron activations yep. from Norm. <laughs> Oh my god. This is crazy. Man, Norm always makes it a close game. Every time we've had him on camera. Yeah, swarm reroll. He's attacking, attacking Jendin. Oh. One hit. Oh, wow. Oh, four dice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now that Sloan is uh, dead, doesn't get the... Uh, yeah. uh, PT-106, there is zero hull damage on the ISD, and a lot of his shields are still remaining. So I don't think it makes any sense to attack the ISD. And and Norm is, Norm is in the... Uh, Oh, sorry, PT-106, you're talking about the ISD making that maneuver. <laughs> now that all Jendon's friends are dead. <laughs> Left at the end of round five, going into round six. So, really hinges on this. Two things need to happen for... Yeah, two things need to happen for Christian to win. Number one is Norm didn't dial in a navigate command, and number two, Christian has to do the god roll with the dice. So, navigate. That definitely looks like a navigate command. And with engine text. Yeah, you just, you just go straight. And then just turn, just do a hard turn to, to fishtail your rear out of the way of the thing. Yeah, what you want to do is you want to 
for the first few clicks, you want to you want to do uh, you want to go as straight as possible, and then on the last couple of joints, you want to swing. You want to you want to turn so that the, your rear is no longer is that a range? There you yeah, go. closer to it. And that's it. Wow. Uh, yeah, Norm Norm showing his. Uh, so we'll say Jenden's dead. Yeah, they're just gonna agree that Jenden died. But yeah, Norm showing his his supremacy with squadrons. And you know, despite having a much weaker. Uh, ship force. He was ab able to leverage his squadrons, some amazing maneuvers with uh, with his ships, and he was able to pull it off. So this is most definitely going to result in Norm winning the regional championship. Thank you so much, everyone.